Ontario's independent electricity system operator has released a new study a report called Decarbonization and Ontario's Electricity System Assessing the Impacts of Phasing Out of Natural Gas Generation by 2030. This was created in essentially in response to uh, pressure from 30 municipal councils in Ontario who are concerned that more burning more natural gas to generate electricity is going to increase rather than decrease uh, provincial greenhouse gas emissions. So I'll talk to Professor Mark Winfield, Environmental Studies at York University about it. Welcome to the interview, Mark. Hello. Look, why don't uh, we start with just a, a kind of a general overview? Uh, what's your, your take on the study? Well, I don't think the study itself comes as any great surprise. I mean, we, we knew IESO was, was less than keen on this idea. And in particular, I mean, we'd already seen a letter from them uh, in response to the City of Toronto's request to, that we move on a, a natural gas phase out. So in that sense, there's no big surprise. Um, there's a bit more substantiation, although not that much. They did do some modeling. Um, but in a sense, I kind of found the report um, opened more doors and begged more questions going forward than it necessarily answered about where, where the electricity system goes in Ontario and, and these larger decarbonization questions as well. Well, let's talk about some of the comments that the study did make. And uh, for instance, uh, phasing out natural gas uh, by 2030 would lead to blackouts. Uh, uh, electricity bills for uh, residential consumers would uh, increase by at least 60%. And that's a light, political lightning rod in Ontario. Uh, and the IESO uh, was not keen about the idea of phasing out uh, and, and all of the, the, the many changes that would have to take place rapidly uh, to, to phase out natural gas by 2030. Yeah, I mean, they are somewhat apocalyptic in their, in their response, um, which, which again, I'm not that surprised at. I mean, there are, there are underlying problems here in terms of, of much of the groundwork that you would need to achieve this just hasn't been done. Um, we are basically nowhere on energy efficiency. Uh, we're doing no new development around renewables. Um, we're sort of tipped you know, toes into the waters around uh, storage. Um, have had some back and forth with Quebec, but in a sense, so, so in that sense, I'm not terribly surprised, but as I say, it also skates over some, some fairly large questions about the future of the system and the future of natural gas. And in particular, um, doesn't say that much about the fact that, that it's not just a question of phasing out natural gas, at least the pathway that ISO was on envisions a seeming expansion of the role of natural gas, uh, both in terms of uh, the replacement for Pickering and the Darlington and Bruce nuclear refurbishments, um, and also in the longer term in terms of where would we go in terms of any kind of demand growth that happens in response to electrification. So, so there, I, I kind of thought that there were some very big questions uh, that are skated over, particularly you know, the movement of gas as they portray it from a very peaking resource to one which would move much more into a base load and intermediate load kind of role as, as say, as Pickering closes and the Bruce and, and uh, Darlington refurbishments move forward. Yeah, I, we should probably set a little bit of the stage for viewers because uh, Ontario over the 2020s and into the early 2030s is going to lose one nuclear power plant, two down for the refurbishment, the, the provincial government uh, is, shall we say, anti-wind and solar and energy storage. There's no energy planning process at the provincial level. There's no climate plan at the provincial level. So the IESO had to respond to this pressure from the municipalities with a great big policy vacuum. Uh, yes, and this, this did come up in uh, the consultations. I mean, the question of, of direction was raised and they were pretty clear that absent any kind of political direction uh, to move in these directions that they, they weren't going there. Um, and yes, given 
you know, all of these trajectories. There's no there's no mandate around um, climate change at all. There's no plan. There's no mandate. There's no mandate around electrification more generally. Uh, there's no mandate around any kind of future direction system. There's effectively a blank on energy efficiency, a blank on uh, on renewables, and a blank on distributed resources. Um, the answer in that context, within the constraints in which the ISO was asked has to operate, is not surprising. But it leaves these bigger questions uh, of what does decarbonization in Ontario look like, and what's the future direction of the electricity system on the table, and as as unanswered as ever, and indeed an existing trajectory. Uh, which sees us losing potentially a significant amount of the ground we gain by phasing out coal, by effectively doing a second NAOP, the Nuclear Asset Optimization Plan, which is what led to the ramping up of coal in the late 90s, uh, on the second round of refurbishments. Um, surely we can come up with a better plan. Well, as complex as the Ontario electricity system is, let's throw in another variable, and that's federal policy. Because during the election, uh, the, uh, the Liberals uh, advanced the idea of a national grid uh, partnership uh, in order to look at integrating uh, you know, electricity systems and markets. So the feds are gonna be pushing this. Uh, we were, uh, there's all kinds of uh, incentives and policies uh, already in place and more contemplated in order to speed up electri electrification. So we've got modelers telling us that Canada is gonna need two to three times as much electricity by 2050. And so some, some, a good deal of that will be pushed by federal policy. So given all of that context, the lack of provincial planning is becoming a bit alarming. Well, it's, it's obviously a very significant gap because an awful lot of, of the, the means of realizing these things are, are effectively in provincial hands. I mean, particularly around electricity, uh, the federal government can put money on the table, um, but it, 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 these are ultimately, on, the systems are ultimately under control of the provinces. Now, some of that could speak very directly to this. I mean, the, the liberal platform says we're aiming for a uh, zero, net zero electricity system uh, by 2035 and, and says that there's gonna be federal regulatory tools deployed to do that. Um, Carbon capture and storage is not a serious option in Ontario. Our geology does not cooperate with that option. And the one place uh, where it might in southwestern Ontario, the, the landscape, of course, is a Swiss cheese, 150 years of, uh, of various oil, gas, and brine wells. Um, so what, how this will play out, I mean, there are other things that could be very helpful. If, if significant money does go into uh, grid connections and interprovincial connections that could deal with some of the objections around the relationship with Quebec. Um, you know, there have often been thoughts also that, that Quebec is, is notoriously energy inefficient, especially when it comes to electricity and there's a great deal of highly cost-effective opportunities there that could help to free up capacity in Quebec. And, and the, the report itself, even just not to go down too far down the pathway, but you know, it's very unimaginative in its conceiving of the relationship with Quebec. It sees a simple straight base load as opposed to perhaps a more, a more active balancing function uh, that Quebec could play and which Hydro-Quebec and other folks have been thinking about as well. So it, it does, though, just add to the extent of the gaps that the federal government is saying one thing, but we have basically zero activity on any of these fronts, transportation, buildings. I, I, indeed, the, the Ford government has just released a series of ads, uh, which goes on at some length uh, about how its primary focus is to construct highways in, in the GTA. I mean, I mean, if you were trying to increase greenhouse gas emissions in Ontario, it would be difficult to come up with a better plan. Um, so, so the gap here is, is getting bigger than ever. Um, and, and we're left with, with no real answers to, to any of this, at least from the province, or how the federal government is going to deal with this relationship with Ontario. Well, on that note, Mark, uh, are we seeing any political pressures emerge? Uh, maybe these municipal councils that were concerned about greenhouse gas emissions from natural gas generation. 
uh, mm -hmm. any other you know centers of political pressure that can get the Ford government uh, to move in you know to, to address some of these issues? Well, um, there are lots of voices. Um, you know, the municipalities that have been mobilized through the Clean Air Alliance around this issue. I mean, the the renewables and energy efficiency folks have been holding off a bit, I think, given the sort of very arbitrary, capricious nature of the way in which the Ford government behaves, they're afraid to offend it. Although what more worse it could do to them, I'm not entirely sure at this stage. Um, so it's, it's going to be a question, though, of, of um, do you see these issues sort of move into the forefront? Because we're now in an election year in Ontario. And there are many areas in which these questions about what exactly is the Ford government planning on doing going forward um, are, are unanswered. And uh, one could see particularly the growth in um, emissions and the role of natural gas that is essentially the business as usual trajectory becoming more and more of an issue. I mean, already we have municipalities that recognize, oh, okay, we're about to lose a lot of what we thought we gained from the coal phase out, um, that could become one of a number of issues that, that come back to haunt the Ford government over this larger issue of, well, we have no plan around climate. We have no plan around energy and electricity. We appear to have no plan around land use planning other than to give the developers and the highway builders everything they want. Um, all of that at some point, one would hope, uh, will become part of the conversation as we head into an election in Ontario. Um, if it doesn't, um, I'm, I'm not sure what our path forward is. It appears to be a path backwards. Well, Mark, thank you very much for this. Always appreciate your insights. Great, thank you.